running? Yes, it's running. Hey everybody, thanks so much for checking out this video. This is a removal of a ground nest. This is an eastern yellow jacket nest. Um, this was a nest at my parents' house. So they were blessed to have two different yellow jackets nests on their property this summer. So this I was able to get, um, I took my time, was able to get three good angles of the removal process. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys this because I'm able to bounce around from one camera to the other depending on how much better the angle was on one or the other. So this was, um, this was some intense shots here, um, getting them as close as I could to, uh, to seeing the activity pouring out of the hole as I pounded on the ground. So just look at all the numbers just coming up to the entrance way. And a few more pounds and there they come, just pouring out of that hole. And you can hear them hitting the inside of the of the vacuum tube and hose. Look at the fury! Holy cow! And these guys are so aggressive. I mean, they just they, they when they come out, they just latch on. They're just as bad as southern yellow jackets. Eastern yellow jackets are like the the ground version of southern yellow jackets. Any time I've been stung has either been from southern yellow jackets or eastern yellow jackets. That's kind of a lie. And a bald-faced hornet earlier on the spring, but I didn't tell you guys about that. So. <laughs> But the numbers here is incredible. Um, I am so excited for you guys to see the size of this nest. When I dig this thing out, it is humongous. I mean, just the amount of excavating they had to do to fit that nest in the ground is absolutely insane. But, I mean, just look at the numbers. I mean, th th this should tell you how big this nest is by how many are coming out right here. So these are guards and foragers. If there's this many guards and foragers, you can just bet your money that this thing is going to be ginormous. Funny thing was, my da this is an area where my dad mows on on their back hill, and uh, it's the house I grew up. I used to play a lot on that back hill, but um, they uh, dad had mowed maybe about a week before, and I uh, was getting ready to mow this day, and we were sitting on the back patio talking, and we were looking for yellow jackets because they were flying back and forth down to the field. And he just happened to look over and saw a kind of swarm over on the grass. He goes, oh, what's that over there? It looks like flies. And I went over and investigated, and it was this nest. I was like, oh my gosh, man, it's a good thing you didn't start mowing. So this was, and he was wondering why he didn't get stung the last time he mowed. And I said, well, it's because after we found, after I dug up the nest, I found that it was about two inches down in the ground um, where the top of the nest was. So it was actually 14 inches down altogether, but um, it was about two inches from the surface so there was a little bit of a surface cushion where when he ran the mower over he probably didn't get the tire directly on the nest so it probably didn't stir them up right there. so right there is where the nest was I could bang on the ground and I could hear the, the tone difference and I could tell that that's where the nest was so I have to get the camera adjusted a little bit on the gimbal which is actually not really a gimbal it's a crane too um, it's really good for motion shots that I can use the um, use the directional key on it and I can turn the camera whichever way I need to and not have to worry about a tripod. So what I didn't want to do is just take a shovel and just shove it down in the ground and break up the nest and have them swarm out all at the same time. What I like to do is actually just slowly remove the soil and as they start to escape from the, from the top, then I just put the vacuum right on that particular spot and suck out as many as I can and bang on the, on the surface and everything and try to get them to swarm out that hole. But if I just cut directly in the top of it with a shovel, then they're just going to escape out of any which way and they'll be all over me. 
and they were already all over me. If you watch me at certain points, you can see them after they come out. You can see them just like latch completely onto my suit. I feel like a paleontologist when I'm doing this. I just like, I, I might as well just have like a little brush like at the beginning of Jurassic Park when they're like dusting off the bones. It's kind of what I feel like when I'm doing this. At one point here I had about, probably about 500 or so adults flying around me and at least 30 to 40, at least 30 to 40 landing on me and latching on. These are the kind that when you spray them when they're latched on with with the um, black flag spray, they will stay in the stinging position even if, w until they die. They won't spaz out or anything and leave. They'll stay latched on. So you can see on my body here, there's quite a few. There's like some going underneath the duct tape on my wrists, which is a hazard because that's my weakest point of my suit is my wrists. You can kind of see them swarming around me here. And right there I got stung on my foot. So my wonderful shoe, which I didn't duct tape all the way shut, um, there's mesh on the side of it and that's where it got me. I knew it was going to go through that mesh. Huh. I told you going to get through my freaking shoe. Any kind of breathable shoe isn't a good idea to wear to a removal. <laughs> and I was, then I was very conscious about where they were on me and things. And uh, you can see they're latched on my arms. Like they're just like totally like hunched over because they're stinging and stinging and stinging until they hit you. And that's why this this particular species can be really really dangerous, especially to kids, because they don't give up. Like once they latch on, forget it. You, you're they're stuck on you until you kill them, until you smash them off of you. And then you're left with a stinger in your arm because you disembowel them, and the stinger's left behind. So here you're seeing the top of the nest, and that's comb. And so what I do is once I get a little bit of soil on it, I just kind of vacuum the soil off. So my vacuum gets pretty much full of dirt by the time I'm done ground nests. And pebbles. It's a great size nest, that's for sure. You can just tell by the top of that. I mean, you can see it's already two inches down, at least two inches down. And then you start to see the cavity. And that is literally just like the tip of the iceberg. That thing was just humongous under there. And eastern yellow jackets usually don't make that big of nests. Like their their nests are usually about a little bit bigger than a um, little bit bigger than like a small miniature basketball, like the kind you get at the fair. But this one was about the size, maybe a little bit smaller than an actual basketball. And to think that they excavated this entire nest from a mole hole. A rodent of some kind, a mole or a vole, M-O-L-E or V-O-L-E, they will make their tunnel, and then they abandon that, that tunnel, and then the spring, a queen yellow jacket will go in that hole and say, this is where I'm going to build my nest, and then she fixes her, the, the, her nest onto the inside top of the tunnel, and then as her babies start hatching, they start excavating. So this entire hole that you're seeing was excavated by yellow jackets. That hole was not just there. And then they built their nest inside of it. Like they actually carried out chunks of soil bit by bit out of that hole. You'll see some of my previous videos where I show them carrying out chunks of soil. And this is what they would be digging. These perfectly smooth chasms to build their nest. And I think of all like the yellow jackets and uh, wasps in general that I do, I think these nests are the most interesting because they actually have to create the space that they live in, as opposed to like German yellow jackets or European hornets where they go and they're living in a wall space that was already created for them. So these guys actually had to excavate their own living space. Bald-faced hornets are like a very similar species in the sense that they build their own space, but they make their entire nest and then just cover it over with envelope. So it's it's an interesting, interesting uh, engineering feat. But this one I think takes the cake as far as you have to be 
you have to have an excavating engineer. You also have to be a construction engineer to build the actual nest. And then they're doing all the all those things at the exact same time. So they're digging while building. And they're building while digging. So as a group of them are digging out and excavating further down, there's wasps that are building the nest down to continue to fill up the space that's being provided. It's just incredible. I, I, I could talk forever about how cool that is. And it was heavy. Like it wasn't light. It was it was a pretty heavy nest. And here she comes. Look at that monster. Holy cow. What are we counting there? Six tiers? Those are Queen Comb in the front. So they were already a productive nest. Reproductive, I should say. Six tiers. That's crazy. See it, Mom? My mom was watching from the deck. <laughs> Up for the. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said, jerk. That was totally natural and organic. I didn't do that for the camera. My mom said that's huge. I had to say that's what she said. Bless her heart, she's precious and would never have approved of a joke like that when I was younger. But she can't control me now. <laughs> so when people comment on my vacuum being weak, this is the reason why I have a quote-unquote weak vacuum. So I can do shots like this where I'm just trying to get the adult sucked out. This envelope is a super, super brittle. And I'm just trying to vacuum up the adults. I'm not trying to suck out the envelope. So this is where that gets really, really good to have a very specific suction with your vacuum. So there I'm pulling out adults off my wrists and off my body. I just want to get a couple of cool shots of the inside of this hole because this hole is incredible. This really shows their excavating engineering. Not the easiest thing to do in the suit to get precise uh, shots. So I'm constantly have to check the controls on the crane 2 and on my camera and adjusting things. And looking through that veil, it's really, really hard to get those shots. So usually it's better just to set everything up with the suit off and then just kind of hope for the best. But I really wanted to get some cool shots of the inside of this hole right after removing the nest. So what you're seeing here is the envelope. Look at all that envelope. So even though there's ones digging underneath of it, digging out soil, they build the envelope down as they go. So they just keep building and building and building envelope and building nest and building comb and digging at the exact same time. It's just absolutely incredible. So that crane too is awesome. And yes, I got knee pads under there, folks. I did it before you guys said anything. So don't go tell me you suggested it. <laughs> Great minds think alike. So now I just want to pull out some of the envelope. I did want to keep a little chunk of this because I'm going to be doing a series when it gets colder out and I'm not going to be doing removals of my sit-down projects where I'll be talking about the different kinds of nests and comparing them. And I wanted to keep a little chunk of eastern yellow jacket nest along with my bald faced hornets and arenaria nests and European hornets and those kind of things so I can show you guys the differences. So you'll notice down the bottom of this hole, I'll get some better shots here in a bit, but you'll notice down the bottom of this hole that there's nothing but rocks. And before I even say it, let's see if you guys can guess it. If you guessed it, let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to see how many people thought of it, why there's rocks in the bottom of the hole. Spraying myself with black flag. You gotta do that when they're all over you and you're afraid of getting stung. <laughs> Alright, let's see the inside of that hole, shall we? So 
I'm trying to suck out some more of the envelope just to get the rest of it because underneath of the envelope are a ton of yellow jackets that are underneath the rocks excavating. They were actually excavating while I was doing the removal. They weren't like escaping from the nest or anything like that. Like they were literally going down into the, they were already underneath the rocks excavating out soil while I was doing the removal. Just want to show a few shots of like the behind the scenes. This is how my this is how my videos go when I'm working on getting shots Great. throughout the removal. This is why removals take me tw probably twice as in slow motion. Take me twice as long. Apparently, I had two cameras shooting in slow motion. I didn't know that. Oh. You want me to turn this one off? Uh, no, I just didn't know that. my mom, okay. precious. All right, so look in this hole. Look at all the rocks. Look how clean the rocks are. Yeah, they got a little bit of black flag on it. I'll give you that. But those rocks are just picked completely clean. Because what happens is, those rocks were suspended in the soil before the wasps started digging. And then as the wasps start digging, the rocks start falling down into the hole. So they dig soil off from underneath the rocks, and then the rocks fall down to the bottom. They just slowly keep falling down. It's just like someone just shaking them down. And then once, to a certain point, when I dig it out, then you see all the rocks collected at the bottom. How cool is that? So they can't carry the rocks out, but they can at least drop them to the very bottom of the hole. So this is the muddy mess of adults and envelope and soil collected in the bottom of the bucket. I'm right here. Oh, it's very nice, but oh, my precious mother gave me supper for my hard work of removing this humongous and awesome nest. So this is after about a day of it sitting in this clear Rubbermaid tub. It's not really Rubbermaid. Shouldn't really promote that brand. Um, but it had been sitting in here for a bit, so the the um, mature adults had pretty much died, as you can see in the bottom of the tub. And then the new adults were between the comb, comb, comb. <laughs> Get it out of your system now. I don't want to hear it anymore. LOL. Um, so they're between the comb and they're just hanging out and they don't fly. Um, as opposed, there were a couple that flew, but they were I think they were just some lingering mature adults that uh, survived uh, being in the container for an extended period of time. It got really humid in there because this nest was kind of damp just from being in the ground. And uh, they're really sensitive to humidity. And I think that that was just what did them in. There was a decent, well, you can see it on the side of the, of the bin, there's a bit of moisture there. I think that's pretty much what did them in. The cone was kind of soft. So again, having multiple angles is great because I don't have to worry about certain shots not being able to be seen because I'm not always checking the viewfinder. And my handy dandy and trusty pry bar works great for prying comb apart. I want to see what's inside that between those two cones. Let's see it, shall we? There's a decent amount of adults under there, which is pretty wild, because like I said, I cleaned this out right before I did this shot. So it was probably maybe an hour worth of time, and all this had hatched. Another reason why I like using my vacuum, and the strength that it provides, is uh, when I'm sucking the adults out, it doesn't pick up the comb. Oftentimes, when even with this particular vacuum, if it's a lighter comb, like this uh, Eastern Yellow Jackets are, see how thin the patties are? 
when they're lighter like that, the vacuum, if it gets too close, it will actually suck up the comb and actually break it apart and suck it into the into the vacuum canister, which is a pain because I'm not trying to suck this comb up. You see some dead adults on the bottom there, met their demise from the humidity or the stale air inside that container. And I'm not really doing this for any particular reason other than just to show what these comb look like. But I mean, like I said, this was underground, and look how clean the comb is. I mean, that is just, it's pristine. Like, it was, it's not covered in soil, it's, it's just, like I said, they're building this in, a, like, a cavity. After it's been excavated out, it's, none of this comb is touching soil. But it's just completely clean. It's as if it, you know, as if it's a bald-faced hornet nest that's hanging in midair. And what I should start doing is like having rollers and comparisons and things next to them. So you guys can see how big this is. But this is this is probably about 14 inches wide. 12 to 14 inches. And for you larva holics out there who've been begging me to do tweezing, here's a little bit of tweezing for you. And I'm going to shut up with the voiceover so you guys can enjoy your tweezing ASMR.
Chip, 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 Yeah, I almost fed everybody without you. And before you guys ask in the comments, or mention it, that you think that Pigeon doesn't get enough, that girl eats just as good as the other two. Angel actually eats less than all of them. Ginger probably eats the most. Angel doesn't eat as much just because uh, it just must be her breed. Um, she eats plenty for herself, but she just doesn't eat as much as Ginger or Pigeon. Pigeon is kind of the pig. She she grabs stuff and she runs with it. It's actually hysterical. If I put out pizza or something, she will literally grab it and run. So the other girls can't have it. And sometimes Ginger will chase her, but um, for the most part, she just drags it away to somewhere private. She doesn't like to eat around the girls as much. She usually likes to grab stuff and, and run off with it and then eat it by herself. It's just her nature. She's not she's not bullied. She's not whatever. She just that's just the way her breed is. She's very skittish. As opposed to Ginger, who's the matriarch. And there she goes. <laughs> She had to lay her egg so bad. I called her back up. That's what she was doing in the beginning. Is she was going down to lay her egg. But you hear her call to Pigeon because she wants Pigeon to come down with her to, to lay her egg. So you'll hear down her squeal. Right here. Right there. <laughs> She's calling Pigeon. That's what she does when she calls Pigeon. I don't think Pigeon's listening to you. Yeah. yeah. See, Pigeon's up there looking at her. Do it again. She didn't hear you. Pigeon was right there waiting on her. I think you just to lay an egg. And here comes Pigeon. She's afraid to come down because I'm standing here. As usual. You get her running off. Like, as if she's like, she has to poop or something. Because she has to lay that egg. But she doesn't want to go in there herself, I guess. She always has pigeon in there. <laughs> she has that di di diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. Walking right past the yellow jacket's nest. Go 
Good at your egg. Go ahead. I don't know why you need pigeon in here with you. And then your own eggs. She's looking for pigeon. Go lay it, I'm not bothering you. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. If you guys are continuing subscribers, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my content supporting my channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.